I'd officially like to welcome everybody to Toby X. I've never been more excited or proud to help host this meeting. And um, first of all, I want to thank all the faculty that have volunteered their time to come here and help educate and share their knowledge. And we really appreciate the sacrifice of leaving your clinics and your patients and your families to be here. And I know it was difficult for many of your flights, but we made it, we're here, we're really excited that you're all here to be a part of this. I'd like to thank all the attendees as well, first timers, those coming back, we really appreciate you making the effort. And lastly, I wanna thank all our industry support. Without them, we could never put on a show like this for everybody. It's really exciting. We have approximately 700 attendees, which continues to grow at a 30% rate each year, which I think echoes the field's growth. We have 84 international attendees, truly making this an international experience of collaboration. So just briefly, 10 years, I couldn't help but get nostalgic or look back and how it all began. And so just briefly for me, 13 years ago, right out of residency, I was introduced to the concept of biologics and PRP. Some of our colleagues that are in this room pioneered the treatment in Spain and they were doing it on European football players to accelerate recovery from injuries. And to me, the light went on, the detrimental effects of cortisone, the false benefits, feeling like there must be more we can do for our patients or more options. So I immersed myself in the literature and there really wasn't that much. So I published a review paper several years ago and it just got me really passionate and enthusiastic about this field, but it wasn't enough. So the concept of injecting blood or red cells into a knee just seemed very foreign and unusual to us. Uh, we know with hemophiliacs, and you'll learn later about it, so why would we be injecting blood into joints? So I seeked out to find those in the world that were doing it, and I decided let's put together a group where we can all share our ideas and advance the science together with really genuine and sincere intentions. And so I think that's what makes this Toby meeting really unique, that it was created by a physician for a physicians to really help us come together and learn. And that first group had a potpourri of docs from the Philippines, uh, Spain, uh, all over the world in places that I couldn't imagine. So the original Toby format in 2010 was quite interesting. We had a symposium, an attendee, about 20 doctors arrived for that. We had live ultrasound scanning. I found initially, surprisingly, no one would respond to my request to speak at the event. So oftentimes it was me going through many of the lectures and a handful of colleagues. We brought patients in shuttle buses to our LA clinic and we did live cases. So we had doctors standing around, as you can see, watching us doing various procedures on different body regions. But it was also a special time and unique where we really got to know everybody who attended the conference. And it was really forming a community, which I think continues onward with this event, as you see the enthusiasm, as people are really genuinely excited to be here and willing to share and accessible, where key opinion leaders will easily sit with one another if you're a beginner and share their experiences for the common good. So this is a picture, a throwback image of the first Toby meeting compared to where we're at now, and that was a picture from the win last year. So with the growth of the field, there were unforeseen challenges that we're gonna hear about at this conference. And it's now more important than ever as a community that we band together and practice compliant, ethical, sound science. I foresee data as being the true game changer that's gonna propel our field. In the past, we used to collect paper charts and have staff call patients for follow-ups. It was very tedious, but we did it. Now, with technology, it is so easy and effortless for most clinics to collect data in a cost-effective manner. As a field, we should all be doing this. Imagine future conferences where we have an N of 2,000 bone marrow patients and we can, instead of sitting up here debating our anecdotal uh, results of one versus two bone marrow or multiple sites or how many frequent injections do you do for knee arthritis, we can have metrics and objective data. Insurance carriers want to see that as well in terms of comparing cost to conventional treatment. 
it's really important that we have the triad of physicians, industry, including surgeons and non-surgeons, all working together for a common goal of growth of the field. And lastly, it's really important and to me a no-brainer that we all maintain regulatory compliance. There's, there's certain do's and don'ts you're going to learn about to stay in the safe zone, and we all need to adhere to this. There's just a couple non-for-profits that have recently uh, come to fruition that I wanted to introduce. The first are several colleagues from Toby. Uh, Alan Mishra, Bill Morell, and Don Buford have formed the Biologic Orthopedic Journal, which I encourage all of you to submit any future biologic papers to this journal, which is a peer-reviewed journal. And also, all the Toby 2019 abstracts will be published in this journal. Secondly is a new organization you're going to learn more about. It's called the American College of Regenerative Medicine which promotes education, safety, science advancement, and most importantly, advocacy, which includes lobbying, regulatory, and legal support, which this field is going to need to have a say at the table. This is the first year that we've offered scholarships, and I'm really proud to do this uh, for a great person that passed at the age of 38 who was a Toby faculty and really emulated the spirit of the field and had a lot more to give before his life was cut short. Victor was faculty at Toby. He spoke. He was always willing to collaborate and was headed for great things. And sadly, his, his life was cut short, but at least as a field, we can live on for him. So we were proud to offer 112 scholarships this year to residents, fellows, military, we have several U.S. military personnel here, um, as well as those practicing in underserved communities, whether it be Bangladesh, Egypt, we had an overwhelming swell of support and interest, and we just basically gave scholarship to anyone who applied this year, as well as 10 travel stipends. Wrapping up, we have apps. I encourage all of you to download the app. If you haven't, there should be a little paper that gives you instructions. Otherwise, find someone in a teal jersey, and they're happy to, to do that for you. We're going to have some live polling to get the pulse of the audience. And then lastly, save the date. Next year, we move back to the Wynn Las Vegas, June 11th to 13th. They have a brand new constructed convention center that will be available by the time of our meeting, and we're super excited and expect continued growth and a stellar agenda again. So without further ado, I just wish you to enjoy this conference, collaborate, innovate, have a good time. I'd like to introduce our moderator for this morning, Dr. Hunter Vincent from the UCLA School of Medicine. Thank you very much.